All right, the new axis of evil taking shape in Afghanistan. China is now reportedly planning to provide lethal drones to the Taliban. The defense website 1945 says China hopes to turn the tables on ISIS-K terrorists following a spat of attacks against interests in Afghanistan. Now, the Taliban are in control. They're a terror group, but ISIS-K is a more radical terror group. China specifically wants to sell the Taliban these advanced drones. You see them on your screen here. They're called blowfish drones. The manufacturer describes them as an unmanned helicopter powered by artificial intelligence. It can be operated either individually or swarmed in configuration with other drones. It can also carry machine guns, grenade launchers, or drop mortar rounds on targets. Drones have become a game changer on the modern battlefield. We've seen this in the war in Ukraine. Let's welcome in now Gordon Chang. He is the author of The Great U.S.-China Tech War. Always great to see you, Gordon. Thank you so much, John. All right, so let's talk about these drones and China's, you know, ongoing relationship with the Taliban. It also reminds us, too, that are, there are a lot of drones that are manufactured by China, this company DGI, that are sold here in the United States. Is there any connection here between these blowfish drones and DGI? Well, you know, certainly the Communist Party controls every entity in China, whether it is nominally private like DJI or whether it's state enterprise. And nobody can sell military equipment to the Taliban without actually having the approval at the top of the Chinese political system. And we also got to remember that there's this report that China is selling 2,500 drones to the Wagner Group for use in Ukraine. So the Taliban sale is not isolated. No, and I think it, it brings us to, you know, the situation where we are today, where we're in a very dangerous time where you see these relationships between uh, the Taliban and China. You see where we are in Ukraine. And obviously now there's a, a situation where uh, we know that Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he'll be going to uh, visit Taiwan. So China issued a statement this week uh, saying they do not want basically anyone, uh, anyone interacting with Taiwan, Gordon. You know, we saw Speaker Pelosi visit last year, but considering where we are, considering, you know, in the global stage here, uh, obviously we cannot have, and I know you said the same thing with Pelosi, we cannot have our leaders being told what to do by China. But do you see something different happening when Speaker McCarthy visits Taiwan later when it comes to uh, China's possible next move on the world stage? Yeah, that's a great question, because the issue is going to be not so much McCarthy, it's going to be Biden. Remember that when Biden publicly expressed doubts about Pelosi going, he was talking to reporters and saying, oh, the Pentagon doesn't want her to go. There was a direct and immediate boost in Chinese propaganda, also its viciousness about the Pelosi visit, because Beijing sensed that there was a division in the U.S. government about this, and also because they thought that they could play on the president. Um, as it turned out, um, Speaker Pelosi didn't care what Biden said, and she went anyway. But this time, we got to understand that what uh, Biden says about the McCarthy visit will be incredibly important, because it also goes beyond the McCarthy visit. Because if McCarthy, you know, if Biden says McCarthy shouldn't go, Beijing will think that it owns the Oval Office. Trying times indeed, Gordon. I just want to get your reaction real quick, too. We had that... Um... Air Force General, I believe, talking about the actuality of war with China come 2025. How accurate do you think that assessment is? I think that it could be 2025. It could be 2024. It could be tomorrow. Um, we just don't know. The one thing we know, John, is that over time, um, the time frames that American officials have thought about China's invasion of Taiwan have shortened. Used to be they would say, well, China's not going to be ready for a decade and a half. Now they're talking about China going to war in two years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just a question of Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, waking up some morning and saying we're going to war. It could also be an accident because of these very dangerous Chinese intercepts in the global commons. Gordon Chang, always great to have you with us, Gordon. Thank you.